Okay, it looks like we're live. Um, hopefully I'm live. It says live, but it doesn't say it on the left side of the panel. But I will assume we are live. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Today's January 30th. It's not as cold as it was um, last week when it was 7, 8, 6. It's in the 40s, 30s. So uh, we're going to go out of a really cold January into a little better January into February. It's hard to believe this Saturday, February 1st. So it was a quick start to a new year. I am home today. I'm wearing my Lust Garden shirt. That's Lust Garden Foundation on pancreatic cancer, who does an amazing job and funds a lot of our research on AI. So we do, uh, I'll give them a plug here. Um, in terms of today, I am working as my son and grant and son's room uh working at home because i'm wanted to make sure that i got a lot of work done i'm doing a bunch of recording today and a bunch of ctss work and a bunch of other work and so there will be no interruptions and um, very efficient use of time so i'm doing that and so i'm also doing the uh, facebook live from at home title is ct protocols on the kidney now, at the end of the day, we always do make the point, and this is truthfully the reason we started CT as us 25 plus years ago, is that you can't do good CT without good CT protocols. The number one reason for missing something often is you do the wrong protocol so you don't see the lesion that's present, and that's true in kidney, pancreas, liver, lung, you name it but also the ability to be very specific as to what a um, finding is. Now, I have noticed lately, and I've been uh, told by referring physicians that they're very troubled by this, that people now, because everyone's busy working hard, their conclusion is mass present, mass in pancreas, mass in kidney, mass in liver, you name it. No one explains what they think the mass is, and of course, next steps maybe you don't want to say do a biopsy maybe you don't want to say do eus but you got to say something at least putting it for the clinician what their next steps need to be it can't be that the only thing they think about is there's a mass and you really have not helped them out all that much so we need to be specific and in the kidney that becomes very important as well two phases that are commonly left off non-contrast we talk about that's good for stones, but it's also really good for telling you what the density of a lesion is. And so if a lesion is over 70 Hounsfield units, well-defined in a non-contrast scan, then it's going to be a high-density renal cyst 99% of the time. If you then only have arterial or only have venous, you're going to see a lesion that you're going to end up reading as probably a um, hypovascular renal mass, suspicious for a papillary renal cell carcinoma. And that's why 25% of tumors under two centimeters resected are benign, because people don't realize that a lot of lesions are benign, and unless you have the right phases, you can't make the right diagnosis. The other thing is how do you manage patients? Older patients with papillary and under three or four CM that typically be followed. Sometimes you may even follow small clear cell renal cell carcinomas when they're one or two CM, depending on the patient. But what you need to be able to do is be able to look at the images and determine what the lesion is. If you give IV contrast and you do arterial phase imaging, the average papillary does not enhance above 90 Hounsfield units. The average clear cell is always above 130, often 200 or 300. But there's a 50 Hounsfield unit gap between papillary and clear cell. If something measures over 100, there's a 95% chance it's a clear cell. Yes, we can see issues with clear cell versus oncocytoma at times and chromophobe metastasis. But invariably, when you see a vascular renal lesion, it's not going to be one of those typical non-aggressive papillaries. It's more likely to be aggressive clear cell. The other thing is in terms of staging tumors, you need venous phase, A, it shows washout, so that can be very helpful. A lesion that stays the same arterial to venous is likely a high-density cyst. Venous is critical for looking at the renal vein. When we stage patients, you want to look at the renal vein, look at the IVC, make sure there's no extension. That becomes very, very important, so we need to do that very clearly. 
we talk about also the importance in protocols of reconstructions. Sometimes with the kidney, when lesions are small and they're on the periphery of the kidney, you can't overlook them or not really understand them in their entirety. When you do coronals, sagittals maybe, but particularly coronals, you'll recognize lesions that kind of sit at the edge of the kidney. You'll also recognize lesions better and be able to quantify lesions better. So when we talk about protocol hematuria over 35, non-contrast arterial venous and delayed, and you must look at axial, coronal, and sagittal for all phases. Now we talk about 3D imaging. We like 3D because it gives good vascular mapping, is excellent for preoperative planning, particularly with cinematic rendering, and those are all additional things you can do and also become very, very important. We talk about distinguishing between various renal tumors, lymphoma, renal cell metastasis, for example, enhancement, lesion appearance, washout values, the presence of adenopathy, and if present, the extent of adenopathy, the involvement of adjacent organs. So if you see a renal mass, single or multiple, but there are liver and splenic lesions and nodes, you're probably dealing with lymphoma and not clear cell. If you have a lesion that's clear cell at presentation or recurrence, the Mets, muscle, stomach, bone, pancreas, are typically hypervascular. So when you're staging a renal cell or you're following a renal cell, particularly a clear cell, make sure you have arterial phase imaging in there. And again, we're looking for lesions which can be treated. We talk about five years as a cure for cancer in general, but things like clear cell can recur 10 years or 15 years later, very commonly into the pancreas. So again, you can't assume it's gonna be okay and People sometimes will say, oh, I'm not giving IV contrast, the patient's had a nephrectomy. If you have normal renal function, there's no increased risk giving IV contrast, whether you have one or two kidneys. A single kidney with normal renal function, normal creatinine, give IV contrast. You can argue, should I give a little bit less, give a little bit less, don't give too much less. You need a good quality study, hydrate before, hydrate after. Hydration never hurt anybody. But that's going to be the point. You need to get really, really good protocols in that. I mentioned about multiplanar reconstruction, routine, every single case. 3D is helpful, particularly cinematic. We're writing about that. We talk about excretory phase. I think I gave a talk a while back about the importance of excretory phase, detecting transitional cell carcinomas, sometimes even clear or papillaries. Sometimes that excretory phase may help you, particularly on a... Uh, papillary for small lesions where it shows better on the excretory phase. Excretory phase is critical for transitional cell carcinoma. It allows you to look at the pelvis and calyces, see infiltration of the calyces, or see small tumor in the calyces. Remember, transitional cells can be big and bulky, but often they can be small with a little bit of narrowing of a calyx or calyceal irregularity. And for that, you need excretory phase imaging. We do make the point in those cases, excretory phase imaging works really well with MIP imaging. So I like to look at MIP imaging to look at the calyces and the ureter. When you just do windowing, it can be a bit tricky with MIP, it works out very well. Also to make the point that when we do delayed scans, we typically wait five minutes, sometimes four minutes, so it's four or five. We don't wait 10. People wait 10, they think the ureters are going to be better filled in. Probably the answer is that's not the case. The ureters sometimes don't fill in because there's peristalsis. We know that from the IVP days. If you wait to 8 or 10 minutes, the contrast in the kidney gets so dense, there's all sorts of beam hardening artifact. And then when you're looking at the calyces, you'll overcall or undercall the presence of lesions because there's so much artifact present. So for us, phases, protocol, non-contrast, Arterial, 35 seconds. Venus, 70 to 80 seconds. Delayed, four to five minutes. I personally usually like four minutes, uh, but you can do up to five minutes. Again, thin section CT, if patients are younger with hematuria, you'll only do the kidney on the venous phase. If they're older, you may go straight through the pelvis. Remember, always look at the bladder and hematuria patients, particularly in arterial phase imaging. Small vascular lesions, which bladder lesions are, can be seen. 
Uh, we give patients water before the study so the bladder is distended. You want the bladder distended so you can pick up small tumors. Remember an exam for hematuria, kidneys, ureter, and bladder, everything needs to be looked at. So those are some helpful pearls. There's a lot more on CTSS. When I finish this talk, when I finish this uh, CT is us Facebook Live, I will start at exactly 17 minutes. I will be doing a lecture series that will come out in March, five parts on uh, hematuria. So um, with that, I'm going to get going, and I hope you have a great day. Bye, everybody.